Hi guys, it's Quinn here. If you enjoy my videos, consider hitting the like button. It's the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. The Xenogenesis Trilogy, aka the Lilith's Brood Trilogy, is a series of science fiction books written by one of the greatest science fiction authors of all time, Octavia E. Butler. Now, to even talk about this book series a little bit, I'm gonna have to give some minor spoilers, so if you don't want to know anything about the Xenogenesis Trilogy, probably don't watch this video. This series has so many intriguing ideas. Essentially, through nuclear bombs, humanity ends up destroying itself, uh, rendering most of the world to be utterly uninhabitable. A race of aliens known as the Oankali managed to save some humans, and they put them in stasis aboard their giant biological spaceship, which is not quite animal, not quite plant, and not quite asleep, not quite conscious. These aliens are able to alter things about the humans. They make them resistant to diseases. They make it so they no longer have cancer. The ones they'd rescued from Earth would now live extremely long lives, and for most of their lives, they would look young. As the Oankali healed the rescued humans in stasis, they repaired the Earth making it once again inhabitable for life. So all of this seems good. The Owen Kali seem benevolent. This all seems like some great act of cosmic altruism. But of course, it's not. The Owen Kali aren't doing this out of altruism. They have a very specific reason for doing what they're doing. And I'll explain why. Life perpetuates itself. Biologically speaking, the goal of life is to spread its DNA, to multiply. Now we've all seen the classic sci-fi horror movie Alien, where the xenomorph lays its eggs inside of a host and the chest burster comes out and it grows into a full-fledged alien and that's how the creature perpetuates itself. That's not exactly what's going on here but it is about the perpetuation of DNA. The Owen Kali themselves would call it trade. And to help you understand, I have to tell you something about the Owen Kali and their nature. So naturally, there are three Owen Kali sexes. There are male, there are female, and there are Uloi. The Uloi have the ability to store and alter the DNA of others. What the Oankali have done continuously throughout the eons of their existence is merge with different species. And in the process, that specific species would be forever changed, and so would the Oankali, and they would forever be one. And this is the fate they intended for humanity as well. So in a sense, humanity would no longer exist, for their children would be Oankali. So this book series follows the last surviving humans as they come to terms with the fact that they will likely be the last humans as they see humans, at least. So this book has a lot of really interesting themes and ideas. Of course, it brings up the question, what even is a human? But it's also about oppression and ostracization and being different and being feared for those differences. It's about humanity's tendency to hold on to archaic things and resist progress for fear of change. So the aliens seek to trade with humanity, and in the process humanity would be forever changed. But this series also acknowledges that in doing this, the Oankali have taken agency away from humanity and that, in and of itself, is a terrible thing. Yes, they saved humanity, meaning they kept them from dying, but they also enslaved them and took away their sense of being in control of their own fate and of their own destiny. 
And to clarify what I mean, I have to talk about another slight spoiler. The Oankali have removed humanity's ability to have children on their own through male to female contact. The only way that humans can actually produce offspring is by using Uloi to mate, and the Oankali determine who gets pregnant and when. Now of course, there's plenty of humans that don't want to mate with Uloi, but if they choose not to, they're condemned to live out the entirety of their long lives with no children, which some of them are okay with, a lot of them aren't. So this series is one of the most intriguing and weirdest series that I've read in a long time, and I say weird in the best way possible because I love weird stories. I really enjoyed the themes of how do we rebuild society and avoid the mistakes of the past. I always enjoy themes like that in books. And I also love the concept of biological technology in science fiction. The alien vessel and the way it functions I found to be particularly interesting. And of course the nature of the Uloi and their forever changing existence. And their existence in relation to the biological technology that they possess I also found to be very interesting. Biological technology is a concept that's really intriguing to me and it's actually at the center of my upcoming new graphic novel which I'm not ready to talk about yet but I've always loved the concept and I love the fact that it's at the center of this trilogy. Another interesting thing about this series is yes aliens did save the humans. Yes they did fix the earth, repair the damage that we had done to the earth and to ourselves but also there is this level of condescension on the aliens part whereas they kind of look down on humanity and they kind of think they could never survive on their own well maybe that's true but to take away the free will of the human species is essentially to destroy the human species now it is mentioned that the reason these aliens chose to save humans specifically was because there were certain characteristics in humanity that they found very attractive essentially but the curious thing about this is in doing what they're doing in quote-unquote trading with humanity merging with humanity they may be destroying the very thing that drew them to humanity in the first place now that being said there is a more solid practical reason that these aliens sought out humanity specifically but i'm not going to completely spoil that for you Unlike the last book I talked about on this channel, The Killing Star, you totally can get this book series as an ebook if you want. It's readily available. So, Octavia E. Butler is just fantastic, and I definitely plan on covering more of her books in the future. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe for more Quinn's ideas. Thank you guys so much for watching.